Why, hello there! Ah, oh, the 4th of July. A holiday that celebrates the United States. It commemorates the time when the US declared independence from Great Britain and asserted that all were created equal in their country. Well, almost. I mean, the Native Americans certainly were treated fairly, and those of African heritage, or any other minority heritage, or certain white heritages, or women. Yes, the US has had many problems and ordeals in the past, but what about today? Oh boy, there is just a lot to say here, so let's just hit a few problems. Oh good, I can see we're starting with an easy one. <sighs> Policing in America has always been bad to say the least. You can look it up on the interwebs to see the origins of American policing and well, not the best of results honestly. Today though, I would not say it is better in any way. The police have been seen as bullies who can get away with, well, almost anything. This isn't hard when the police investigate themselves. The jury is an executioner as the, they elect themselves! Yeah, not great. It is no wonder that many Americans today just don't trust the police. I mean, the training is terrible. They get away with abuse of power when they can and have very little regard to do the right thing. Makes you wonder how these people got the job in the first place. Now, some people just want to dismantle the police and make it go through a private sector. Seeing how prisons turned out, I feel like that's just a bad idea. Personally, I think the internal investigation should be shut down. Policing oneself is like the mob watching the mob. They only protect themselves and no one else. Instead of internal investigations, I would make an investigative unit that only watches the police. They have no loyalty to the police or any of your cultish uh, political factions. All they do is make sure the police are doing their job and make sure that justice prevails when the police get out of hand. Also, constant retraining and psych evaluations would probably be a, be a good idea as well. Oh, another easy topic. Awesome. <sighs> So, for centuries, you people have been hating each other for the dumbest reasons. Skin color based hate is the dumbest of it all and I don't get it. We big cats don't hate other big cats because of their fur color. That is inconsequential to us and bears no real meaning. So the fact that you guys do it based on color just baffles me. No one should be targeted or hated because of the color of their skin. This seems to be something learned at a young age for you humans. Maybe it was learned from parents or neighbors or some terrible event that happened to you. Either way, it is something that needs to be addressed and rectified. Now, by addressing it, I don't mean getting on the internet and showing how not racist you are by blasting someone for saying something racist. I feel like that is a lazy way to go about this. And by attacking someone, you are certainly not going to convince them of your ways. Doxing, condemning, and showing how good of a person you are for not thinking like a racist seems to be self-centered. No, in order to combat this ideal, you need to understand why it is there. Take Daryl Davis, for example. He is a black man who talked to and helped KKK members to the rallies. By doing this, he was able to talk and confront them about their ideals, causing many of them to doubt the KKK and leave. I understand this is tough, but it seems to be a way more effective way than having someone banned from the social media. Sure, it is not quick or easy, but it is ultimately more rewarding. Unless you are only pretending to hate racism for internet points. Okay, so a lot of you are worried about your health. When you're old and it's cold and who cares if you live on, you die. Yeah, basically that. A system that doesn't really care about your health at all. They are big companies which seems to always want to give you drugs all the time without actually trying to fix the issue. Obviously, they want you to pay for these overpriced pills instead of taking your health seriously. And if one gets addicted to these pills, then the better for them. Insurance itself doesn't even want to help with that issue, but instead make you pay big dollars for mediocre to crappy coverage. 
This is all because businesses have taken over most of the medical game. They make sure hospitals and clinics bow down to the price gouging and lack of empathy. So it is very hard for many Americans to get good insurance or coverage or just trust doctors in general. Now, I am not sure what one can do in a situation like this since we tigers do not have health care. To us, nature just takes its course and we have to deal with it. But you are supposedly an intelligent species, so there are some ideas being thrown around. Universal health care is one of them. This is where the government provides the people with health care. <laughs> yeah, I I've seen your government, so that's a, uh, that's a lot of blind trust there. It looks as though the wealthy have taken over the American government. Now it's not a government of the people for the people, but more like a bunch of rich people looking out for themselves. This means any perceived threat to their profitable systems like healthcare or anything to do with the economy is more important than the needs of the average American. I mean, we tigers are known to hunt the weak, but <laughs> that's for survival, that's for food. This is just protecting excess. That's real lion behavior. Gee, I wonder what I'm talking about when I say two houses. Yes, your political parties is what I'm here to address. It used to be a long time ago that third parties always had a way of getting into the political mainstream. Now, though, it is very tough and almost impossible for that to happen. Why, you may ask? Well, you guys gave power to the state legislatures, which are dominated by the two major parties. It is quite a big problem. In fact, it is one of the biggest problems that your nation has at the moment. Many people would like to vote for a third party, but the problem is they keep getting told that a third vote is a wasted one. So they will either vote for a party that they feel is corrupt or not at all. This to me is a bigger waste because you just give the two houses a vote, which isn't even earned and you suffer for it. They have made worms meat of me. A plague on both your houses! Yep, basically you get stabbed and tossed aside. Those who have no party to vote for are usually left to the dust or shamed for not voting for a side. This is pretty terrible. Not only are the parties ignoring you, but you are being shamed by those in the parties for not going their way. Does this sound like a democracy to you? I may only be a tiger, but from what I read, the origins of America, this is not why your people decided to kill the Brits. It just makes no sense to me that if you are dissatisfied with your party, you will still vote for them solely out of spite for the other party. I mean, what is the point in doing so at all? Both parties have made so many promises and have kept very few of them. What, what they say is not what they do at all. I mean, the debates alone just seem like a high school argument between fussy rich kids. Sure, a lot of you can condemn the other party to your heart's content, but when your party does something pretty dumb, it's suddenly silence on your part. If you are holding others to a high standard, then you should hold your own side to a much higher standard. Otherwise, the whole political debate slides down into a childish game of finger pointing that benefits absolutely no one. The rule of law, it must be held high. And if it falls, you pick it up and hold it even higher! Hypocrisy on both sides is just crazy in my opinion. Then there are the leaders of said parties. Two guys who have said multiple awful things, probably done multiply awfully things, and are out of touch of reality. I mean, just look at what these guys did. What the hell? I'm not even sure what you people are voting for. Look, let me give an example of what I'm seeing at the moment. It's like Americans are all on the Titanic right now. The two parties rammed the ship into the iceberg and took off with the lifeboats. Joe Biden is like a rose floating on a door. It's not that he wants to rescue you, it's just that he wants to hold your hand while you slowly freeze to death. Trump is on one of the lifeboats that isn't looking for survivors, but paddling away from the scene. So instead of just making excuses for the parties or blaming the other side, how about we figure out how to change the system? First is the way you guys vote. 
Now, I'm not saying go popular vote because again, that is high school behavior. I suggest ranked voting. It collects more data from the voter on how they see the candidates, unlike your single marked ballots. One other thing I would like to do is get a major third party. Not one that is Republican light or Democratic light. That's like going on a diet but all you do is change to diet soda other than regular soda. Not gonna change much. I would like to see a centralist party. That way it will force the other two parties to change how they have to deal with the debates. Now they should actually fight for your votes by telling you about themselves and not how the other person sucks. Sure. It almost looked as if one of your cults, uh, the, the parties, was going to address average human concerns. This party had a person who politely suggested that things would change. But he kinda gave up before the primaries were done and it didn't do too much to change things. Twice. Take it from one of your most famous African American speakers, Frederick Douglass, when he said, Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. Maybe it's time you look into who holds the power and start demanding more from your government. Now, I know this may seem like a bit of a downer to you all, but it is. It takes a lot of work to reform a government. It won't be easy, but humans of the past have beaten the odds before. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Well, the man is dead and saw his dreams. What? You thought I actually believed you could change? I bet through most of my video, you heard what you wanted to hear, but actually didn't listen to the whole thing. Nothing is going to change until the meltdown happens, which is your humans go to, and I bet that will be the next civil war which I will call Civil War II, The Reckoning. Yes, it will be East versus West versus South versus Mid. No holds barred and everyone will place their bets. So what do you think? Oh, well, I think it's going to be the East again, which was the North in the first time, but I think they have all the money. Um, well, I mean, the West Coast does too, but, but I think they have more motivation. So oh. I say East. Very interesting. Very interesting. What about you? Well, I'm thinking mid. Everyone ignores the mid. Everyone doesn't care about mid. All they think about the